my next chapter was gonna be and how I was gonna get there. And when this happened, I was just like, wow. <laughs> How to begin this video so I'm just gonna I'm gonna talk I'm gonna try to make sure that everything is in sequence and it makes sense because it truly is like reading a book of my own life that I didn't expect or I didn't I just couldn't predict how it would unfold and how things happen so after everything happened as far as the move and all that we so I mentioned in the first video I want to say we my boyfriend and I mentioned in the first video that my boyfriend and I, um, you know, we have been in a long distance relationship for a long time. We even broke up last year for like a long time. We didn't know if we were going to get back together. We just didn't know anything. And I'm so grateful to God that he guided our paths back to where we are now because we are, we're in an even better place than we were before. And I think sometimes it takes time for you to be apart from somebody to really grow and learn and really appreciate that person. Do you know what I mean? So we both came back into relationship with a greater appreciation for each other. And it's been, <laughs> I can't even like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just been so nice you know and I'm, I'm really grateful because i've been through a lot and i never predicted anything for my life i kind of always like I, I used to always refer to myself as a butterfly i would just float and wherever i landed is where i was going to be and i landed in a place that i didn't see myself landing right now at this moment and at the beginning of the video i put a quote that says you know god says show me your plans and i'll laugh or something like that i can't remember what i, what I put but it's like you you want to tell god what your plans are and he's gonna laugh he's gonna guide your path and guide your steps and show you where you're supposed to be and we ended up in a place that we're both so grateful for because for me i'm i'm one of those people that i told you i'm really over analytical i'm always like what if what if what if and I like to go through a million scenarios in my head before the real scenario plays out. So what happened after the move? And let me just tell you exactly how it went down. So I feel like I have like an eyelash or something on my lip. But after, I don't even know how to, fat, the story is like so all over the place. So once we decided, when we got back together, the plan was originally for me to move into that space that I showed you guys that was done in Atlanta when I moved from New York to Atlanta. The plan was for me to stay there for a year, give ourselves time and, you know, really just try to settle in and just relax, take everything easy. And during that time, we were going to try to find a place to live here in the Netherlands. <laughs> I love that God looked at both of us and was like, you're both overthinkers. You're both over planners. Um, we're very similar in a lot of ways. And so when you're in a long distance relationship and there's one person that wants to move things along and there's one person wants to take things slow we both happen to be the people that want to take things slow so everything unfolded even slower than what it would in the average relationship so we had planned on maybe in atlanta for at least a year during that year we were going to try to find a place here in the netherlands because we knew how difficult it was the housing market you guys know in america the housing market is crazy but in europe the housing market is even crazier, like regular communities. So they have like five major cities here. And if anybody's Dutch and watching, forgive me if I mess any of this up. But from my understanding, there are like five major cities here. Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Utrecht, The Hague, um, Harlem. There's a bunch of cities and they're kind of like our version of New York, L.A., Miami, Atlanta, Chicago, so on and so forth. So the city that we live in is a pretty popular city. It's one of the more popular expat cities. So the real estate here is insane. So we, in our mind, we're telling ourselves like, we need to give ourselves at least a year so we don't get our hopes up. We don't have any expectations. We will be able to find something in a nice and steady manner. We're not gonna feel rushed. It's not, it's gonna just be calm and easy. So when I was showing you guys my space in Atlanta, where I was gonna be living, my setup and everything, 
I was like really excited because like I left New York, this cramped tight space. I'm now in this huge space, lots of backyard space, just everything I ever wanted <laughs> that I didn't have in New York. And then all of a sudden we got a surprise, a really, really beautiful surprise that I did not expect. I wanted this, um, but like later on is what I was thinking. And I feel like God was like, no, sis, this is now. You know what I mean? Like God, and my mom even says it all the time. She's like, this was ordained, do you know? And it just happened. And the funny thing is, I, I had never gone anywhere to get checked out. Like I'd never gone to a place to get checked out to see what was happening and to see what my options were. I just... In, in my mind, and in the forefront of my mind, I should say, I always said, when it's meant to be, it's just going to happen. If God wants it for me, and if God wants that in my life, God is going to order my steps and place it in my life. That's kind of what I've always told myself. And it was hard to keep that faith and be strong in that because I was constantly surrounded by, you need to do this, you should do that, you should be doing this, you're getting... You know, you're getting older and da, 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 da. it's really hard to like blur that noise out. So while we're planning to give ourselves a year and take things slow, we applied for my Dutch citizenship because my Dutch residency. We thought that it would take a long time because of the pandemic and with all the refugees that are coming into Europe and all the things that are happening. We just thought it was going to take a long time. So we applied for it early in the year. We applied for the Dutch citizenship, and then like a month later, I was late on my cycle. And I didn't think anything of it because at the time it was only like four days late, maybe day five or something. And I've been stressed before, so my cycle would delay itself. So I'm like, I literally told my boyfriend, I'm like, don't worry about it, it's fine. Like, we don't have anything, you know, happening. It's okay. Um, I'm probably just stressed with the move and everything that happened. It'd be all right. So <laughs> he's like, okay, like didn't think anything of it. Later that day, um, my mom and I were out. We went to the post office to drop something off for my brother in Germany. And there's a Walmart on the way back from the post office. And I was like, mom, we're literally at the light where you can either go straight to go to Walmart or go right to go home. I was like, mom, can you please like pull over? Just one second, please. Just can you pull into Walmart? She's like, no. My mom hates Walmart. She loathes Walmart. She's a Target person. She loathes Walmart. The lines, the drama, the parking lot. The, she hates Walmart with a passion. But I knew that I wanted to go get a test. And I wanted it to be cheap. I'm not spending $15 <laughs> on a test. Like My uncle's an OBGYN and he always told me the dollar store test is the exact same thing as the 1899 first response test. He, he always told me that, dollar store test. And I was like, there's no dollar store anywhere near, so can pop into Walmart and get like an Equate, two, three dollar test, whatever. She's like, what? What do you want to go for? And then I told her and she's like, what? And so she just goes straight. She goes straight into Walmart, pull in the parking lot. She parks the car and she looks at me. She goes, well, what's going to happen if this is... I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't even know anything. I was like, this could just be nothing. Like, it's okay. It's fine. Let's just, I go right into Walmart. She thinks I'm going to take forever. It's another reason why she didn't want to go. I go into Walmart. I grab the test. Get home. We are getting dressed to go to the aquarium. My sister came over with my nephew. They're waiting on us to get dressed. Everybody's getting ready. So I just drank a bunch of water. I said, hey, let me just take it. And I knew that it would be better to take the test in the morning, but I was kind of eager to figure it out. I peed on the test and right away, <laughs> almost immediately, um, it turned, it had two bars and the feeling that I felt, I never felt like more happy in my life because it was something that I didn't expect and I didn't know if it was possible and the timing of it was perfect because I had been through so much like the year before, like after the pandemic, I'd been through so much, so much with my job, 
lots of criticism, judgment for like decisions that I made in my job. And it was just something in me that was just holding on to like a tiny portion of faith, a tiny portion of it's everything's going to be OK. There's a rainbow at the end of this for you. I didn't know what the rainbow was, but I knew that there was something there and I had to hold on to that faith despite not knowing what it was, you know, and I spoke about that time in the last video that I was in the apartment and I just started crying. Like, I don't know why I cried because I was like fearful of what my next chapter was going to be and how I was going to get there. And it was just like I was in New York for over a decade and I wanted to leave. I didn't know how to leave. I didn't know where to go or how to transition into that next phase of my life. At the time, I had no potential. I, you know, I wasn't engaged, married, or, you know, I didn't have any potential of having like a life outside of just being a single woman in New York or just dating in New York or having a boyfriend, whatever. Like I didn't have anything solid. And when this happened, I was just like, wow. FYI, I'm in my late thirties and that's why I talk about like not knowing if this would happen or whatever. And a lot of my friends were getting their eggs frozen, um, going to reproductive clinics and stuff to try to get pregnant. Like a lot of my friends and peers in my age group um, especially women at work, they had a lot of fertility issues and a lot of women struggled getting pregnant. So it was one of those things that like, I just never wanted to get my hopes up <laughs> because I didn't know what my journey was going to be like. And so I was just so grateful to God that it just happened and it happened in this way because it, it kind of just pushed me in the direction that I needed to go. It's like standing on a ledge. And you know that when you take the leap, it's going to be fine. You know, when you move, it's going to be fine. When you say you love this person and you want to be with this person, it's going to be fine. And for all the years, my boyfriend and I were together. We were taking everything super slow. And it was like we were both really scared. Me more than him because he was ready to move in a long time ago. And I delayed it because I was so afraid of losing my independence. Um, I was actually afraid of losing my independence and being in New York, you know. It was like, oh, I've amassed this beautiful home and this beautiful apartment in New York. I can't just walk away and leave it. If I do, it got to be for this, this, that, and the other. Like, I had put so many things in my own mind that it made the relationship harder because he. there were times when he was trying to progress. Like, yes, he took things slowly, as did I, but I took it even slower. And so I felt like God allowed for this to happen um, and made this happen just because he knew you know like when my mom says it was ordained like I truly feel like it was ordained so I wanted to share that with you guys <laughs> so I'm finally in a place where I can share that so I am five months <laughs> pregnant now five and a half I think I'm like five and two weeks and it's been a beautiful journey I've been very just like I keep crying of course with the hormones <laughs> Um, I've been very calm and peaceful. I haven't felt much stress. I'm so grateful for that. Um, and I just feel like really connected to this baby and <laughs> grateful and it just, I don't know. I feel so happy. And I wanted to share that with you guys because you guys are like my family. And I, I had to wait this long. Sorry, I had to wait this long, but... People were recommending waiting between uh, getting out of the first trimester and then make it to the 20 week mark, da da da, whatever. So I was really trying to make it to the 20 week mark before I shared it. Um, and once I got there, it still took me about two weeks to kind of be comfortable with that because it's such a personal thing. But I wanted to share it too for any woman that may be in their late 30s or you know, you feel a little bit of despair, like you're not sure. Just hold on to your faith. Hold on to your faith. Don't listen to what anybody says. Nobody. Not a doctor, even doctors. I know that sounds crazy, but just hold on to your faith and um, it's going to be fine. Whatever is meant to be, whatever God wants for your life, he will order your steps. He will literally order your steps. So you just have to trust him and hold his hand. And that's exactly what I did. Um, and I'm glad that I did. Took such a leap. <laughs> Moved to another country. Like every day my boyfriend is like, I can't believe you did this and you're fine and you're you know, you're not missing home. You haven't just jumped on a plane and gone back. And he's like, I just, 
I have so much respect for you. You literally left a place that you were in for a decade, moved to another country. And I guess when I was doing it, I didn't think of it that way. I was just, there were so many things to do. I was just in action mode, like go, 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 go. I gotta do this, I gotta do that, I gotta sell this, sell that. You know, it just, it all just happened so quickly. And I never had a moment to kind of just stop and be like, oh, this is happening. <laughs> the only moment I had that was, so when we came here, we um, had a family vacation plan. That was the whole thing. I planned the move to Europe during the family vacation because we were doing a European family vacation and we were gonna go to Greece, but I was like, no. It was just too much going on travel-wise. I needed to sit still. I just felt my spirit wanted to be still. So I, um, when we came here for the European family vacation, we did Amsterdam and then we did Germany. So we drove to Germany from the Netherlands. My boyfriend drove me, my mom, my sister. And we spent time in Germany with my brother, his wife, and um, their daughter, my niece, Olivia. And the last day that we were there, we went to brunch the very last day. And at the brunch, my brother says, so sis, how, you, how do you feel? You know, you feel like you're gonna be okay? Are you gonna miss home? Like, you know, how do you feel? How do you think it's gonna be? And I was like, I think I'm gonna be fine. Like, I'm ready for it. Like, I was ready for a change. I was ready to leave New York. You know, I was like so confident when I told him this. And then we finished the brunch, we all go outside and we're all hugging and saying our goodbyes. And my sister-in-law said something, I can't remember what it was. And it just triggered like an emotional release in me. And I was like, and I just started crying and my niece is crying and she's like, oh my God. And it was just so sad and emotional, not sad, but just emotional. Because in that moment, I realized like, this is the first time I'm actually separating from my family. Little background, I'm one of three for my mom and dad. And I'm a middle child. I was the only one that was never married, didn't have kids. I was always there for everybody. I was at all the family functions, events, birthdays, dinner, whatever. I was always there because I didn't have a family. I didn't have, you know, like anything to keep me away. So I was there for everybody, for everything all the time. Anytime someone was having something, I'm on a plane, I'm there. And it was the first time I realized like, as much as I, I'm not gonna lie, I was kind of tired of that because it was exhausting. It kind of wore on me a little bit but there was still that freedom of knowing that I could just jump on a plane and be, you know, in Atlanta, visit my mom. That's what I did when I was in New York. I was constantly in Atlanta visiting my mom. And so it just dawned on me in that moment, like, you, you can't do that anymore. Like, that's done. And I was happy that I now have a life, now have a family, and now have a reason to like, be like, oh, I can't make it to that, you know? But I think it was the first time I realized like, you won't be with your family anymore, you know? <laughs> and I'll be with them in visiting, you know, holidays and stuff like that. But going from hopping a plane to Atlanta two or three times a month to like seeing my mom once or twice a year, that part was like, like, oh crap, like this is, this is a change. And it was at that moment, I felt what my brother was asking me at brunch, like, how do you feel? It was so funny, so interesting. But anyway, once he got in the car, you know, my boyfriend, <laughs> he just held my hand and I cried it out, and wiped my tears away and, you know, sat in it for a minute and just felt it emotionally. And uh, on the drive back, I was able to just, you know, make peace with it. It was okay. And then when I got back to the Netherlands, it was like, I don't know. It's feel fine. The only thing that I miss is my stuff. I didn't get to bring all of my stuff. And that's what I was telling you guys in the stories before um i left so much stuff <laughs> so much stuff like it was so hard to pack my life to move to another country on just an airplane you know how i did the move from new york with 37 boxes and 1400 pounds of cargo that was it wasn't easy but that was a move move where i was able to take everything with this i couldn't ship things internationally like i did domestically like what that cost me domestically was nowhere near, didn't pale in comparison to what it would cost me to do that internationally. So I was very limited with what I could do. We checked seven bags and as much as I could think of. And at the time when I came here, it was still cold. So I had to pack one suitcase full of jackets, coats. I only took um, two pair of boots, my Doc Martens, and then some dressy boots, a couple pair of sneakers, 
three purses. Um, I tried to pack my camera, which I'm using right now, my camera, a couple pieces of equipment, but I left a lot of stuff like my tripod. So when I first came here, I couldn't even film. I was like doing stuff on the iPhone. It was a lot, but anyway, I'll save that for another video. I wanted to just give you guys this huge life update and this announcement in this video, tell you guys how much I'm grateful for you, how much I love you for being along with me in this journey. And I hope that you stay with me in this journey because there is so much more and it's such a new chapter. And I wanna share that with you, you know? I really want to show you what life is like after <laughs> singledom and after intention. And I wanna to talk to you guys about that too, like setting intention, intentions and being intentional about your life and what you want. Cause I literally had to sit down and have a conversation with myself last year and be like, girl, what do you want? And I had to actually say it, define it, journal it in order for the universe to bring it to me. So that's something I want to get into with you guys as well. And you share that with me too, you know, what you've been going through and, and how you've allowed intentions to help you set the things you want for your future. So I won't keep you. I know this video is long. That's what I want to tell you guys. I love you so much. I'm so grateful that you guys are along with me on this journey. Germany. I keep saying Germany. This journey. <laughs> so stay with me because there's so much more like uh, finding a place, home decor shopping. Like it's going to be late, girl. It's going to be late. That's why I said in that video, I took that poll and I saw that you guys really want to see weekly vlogs. So I can give you a weekly update of what I'm going through and then home decor stuff. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. See you next time. remember thinking if I only could stop the time. Way back when we didn't care what they said, people could stare at it.